Hi, I'm Victor Martin and today I'm going to uh, use uh, an OCI compute instance to schedule others, other resources in Oracle Cloud. That means that if you want to save some credits on Oracle Cloud, you can use this trick uh, to be able to uh, stop, for example, your compute instances over the weekend or uh, out of our uh, business hours. And that is really interesting and also you will learn a lot uh, on the way. So let's dive in. Uh, basically, I mentioned that uh, you should use this uh, project at your own risk. Of course, I haven't implemented any high availability or anything like that. So just keep in mind that uh, if you want to schedule something in production, you probably need to do a little bit more than this. But this, this is a solid base for that. So uh, I have done some steps already, uh, but basically what you have to do is uh, to create an instance that we are going to call Puppet and that instance is the one that we are going to stop and start. Uh, after that, you can get yourself familiar with the command line. Uh, there is other videos that explain how to configure the OCI, but a nice way to do it is with uh, the cloud cell. The cloud cell is just a, um, a pre-configured uh, virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine, that is going to contain all the OCI CLI, kubectl for Kubernetes, and many other tools like Python, JavaScript, uh, all of that is going to be prepacked for you, so you only have to go there and install it and start playing around. Um, so I have some examples on how to list uh, uh, your instances with OCI, uh, OCI CLI, uh, and just follow those steps, make sure that you can start and stop. So th those are the commands that you can do. Let's put it bigger. So those are the steps that you can uh, start and stop. Uh, instances, the commands to do that. So this one is going to start and something important is going to wait for the state to be running and this one is going to perform an action that is a, a soft stop. So basically it's a, a nice way to ask nicely how uh, to stop a, a virtual machine and that has uh, that gives time to the operating system to close all the, all the files and so on. So uh, other thing that we have to do is to create an uh, identity and access management user. So basically this is uh, the user that we are going to use to uh, perform the operations on Oracle Cloud. So start and stop resources. Uh, for that, you go to the menu identity users and click create users and uh, you select identity and access management user. So you will go here to the web console of Oracle Cloud menu Scroll all the way down, identity, users, and I already created one user, but you can click the create user and it will look like this. So that is my hand user, the hand that is going to operate uh, on Oracle Cloud to start and stop resources. Very good. So next step, and uh, you have to keep in, 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 in your notes uh, the Oracle Cloud identity uh, identifier that is on every resource on Oracle Cloud. So for example, for that user that we just created, we have here the OCI ID. You can copy from there. That would be as simple as that. You have to also copy uh, the tenancy ID. So now that we are here, we can scroll down in the menu, administration, tenancy details, and in tenancy details, you will have as well an OCI ID. An OCI ID that you can copy, same way, so nothing different there. The next step is going to be to create a hand, a hand virtual machine that is the one that is going to operate using the hand user. And then we are going to SSH into that machine. I already have that created, so um, the next step would be to install the OCI ID, the OCI CLI, but in my case, I, I already have is configured. So you can follow the steps that is explained in this documentation, in this link, but it's very easy. You just click enter the most of the time and then it's going to ask for some users, OCID, tenancy, OCID, etc, etc, things that you know where to find now. And finally, you will execute the OCI minus V and I'm going to do that just to make sure everything works. So that is my hand virtual machine. I'm going to Enter that and it's going to give me the version that I'm uh, executing on this, 2.13. That's good. Let's come back and now we are going to configure it. I already have this configured, so basically you put this value and we have other videos explaining this, but basically I explained how to put all the values and what you need to do. 
when you finish, it's going to create a private and public key. That is the, the key to be able to talk to Oracle Cloud with security. So that is something that Oracle Cloud should know, at least the public key. So you have to upload it. To upload it, you go to the uh, to your user, in my case, the hand user, and you go to the API section, API key section. I'm going to show you that. So in this case, if we go to identity and users, and then click on your brand new user. Here, if you scroll down, you will find API keys, and that is your API key that I created. You just upload a new one. Cool. To prove that everything works, uh, I'm going to do uh, an OCI object storage namespace get. So that is going to give me the namespace of the object storage service, and I'm going to pipe that in JQ that I'm not sure if it's installed in this machine. If not, we can install it. Ah, perfect. So that is the name of my namespace, and that means that we are able to talk to Oracle Cloud through the command line. That's good. Now, it's time to create uh, the scripts that are going to start the instance. So in my case, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to run beam start instance, and then you can copy this code. So keep in mind that uh, we need the OCID of the Puppet instance. So that is something that I'm going to get now. So insert that. Good. I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to go to the instance, instances, scroll all the way up, compute instances. And now we are going to click on Puppet. And Puppet is going to have an OCID as any other resource in Oracle Cloud. So we copy that, we come back, we paste that value, and now I'm going to save and exit. Cool. We have our first script. Let's come back to the tutorial. We are going to do the same with a stop instance. So let's go back to the terminal, beam. And here we are going to do the same. Just copy the values. Let's insert all of this. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to cut the other one to have the, the Puppet instance OCID. Let's copy that come back to the stop script and modify it. Delete to the end of the line, append. Cool. Let's copy that. And we have both scripts. So now we have a start and a stop instance uh, bus script. That's good. What What is next? OK, we are going to uh, change the um, the execution privilege for that for those scripts. So we are going to run chmod user is able to execute in the start and stop instances. If we list now, we will see that both are executable. That's good. Something else, like if now I execute those, it's going to fail because we need a hand group. And that is something that uh, is across all the identity and access management in Oracle Cloud. If you want to assign some privilege on a user, that user should belong to a, a group. And the groups are going to uh, have privilege based on policies. So the policy is going to allow a group to do specific actions. So in this case, the policy and the group that you are going to create is a hand group. And also, you are going to create this policy. So I already have that created. So in my case, I'm going to show you, for example, the policies. If I go to identity policies, um, this goes for compartments. So in my compartment, I have uh, specific ones that I want to, to use inside. But if, if you go to the root, you should create a policy like this one. So if you see here in the policy statements, I allow the group hand group to manage instance family. So everything regarding instances inside of my compartment. And my compartment is called vmartin. 
So that is the statement. Of course, for this to work, you should have a group that is called hand group. So if you go to identity and groups, identity groups, and you go to a hand group that you have to create, in my case, I already have it, uh, you have to add the user and my user will be hand. So that's the way to proceed. Let's come back. So when you have done that, you can run the scripts and start and stop the virtual machines. The next step would be to use Chrome. Chrome is a daemon that is running in uh, Oracle Linux uh, and then in Linux distribution. But basically it's a nice way to schedule uh, the execution of specific scripts. So now you, you see where I'm going with this. Uh, we are going to copy this. So this, this script, what it's going to do is to execute at o'clock at 10 and 40 past the hour, the stop script. And it's going to start at 10, 30 and 50 past the hour, the stop, the start script. So it's going to, every 10 minutes, it's going to either stop or start the script. Cool. For that, we are going to execute the Chrome tab edition, uh, edition mode. So Chrome tab minus E, enter. And here we are going to insert that. The path line, the first one, is just to be able to execute the OCI command line interface uh, that should be on, on that uh, on that uh, path, the home OPC V. So let's install the new Chrome tab. Let's come back. Let's try that everything works, that everything is correctly created. Very good. So we have that new Chrome. And now we can check the execution of that. Uh, so in this case, I think we need a uh, sudo in order to do the tail, but I can do a, a follow uh, on the bar log Chrome. So that is going to show me the execution of all the, uh, all the scripts that I executed with Chrome. For the moment, nothing is going to happen until in, in one minute something is going to happen anyway. But the, the way to check the results is that you can go to the machine in the metrics. So if you go to compute instance and you go to the compartment that you install the machines, so in my case it's Martin. if you go to Puppet, in Puppet, you will see that in the metrics, there will be a start and stop for these instances. So it's going to look like this. Start, a little bit of float that is going down as soon as all the system is up and running, and then stopped, and then start, and then stopped, and start all the way. So that is the way that your, screen, your script is working. I also have some useful Chrome tabs here. Uh, so this is uh, different uh, schedules uh, that you can try. So at 2 a.m. daily, um, twice a day, you can play around with all of these values, make sure, make sure it, it matches your needs. And once again, just uh, mentioned, there is no high availability here. There is no observability other than you uh, logging into the machine and, and going for the, the, the logs of the Chrome. Um, and uh, you should be careful, well, uh, I'm using public IPs, but maybe in this case you should use a, a, bas a bastion host. Just a few recommendations. Uh, so with all of this, just enjoy scheduling your virtual machines and your databases. Thank you.